Oh, today we got another exclusive, exclusive. We got none other than Joseph Coleman, a.k.a. Lil Jojo. So, if you have not done so, hit that subscribe button because we will be getting more cases. I can already submitted new FOIAs for, for some of you guys' requests. So, like I said, I, I see it all, you know, but if you want to submit more requests, you know, you can jump into one of my premieres, you know, and, um... You can you can list them there, you know, and I, I'll see them. And if I have them already on the list, I'll let you know and, and so forth, man. But, you know, this channel is for y'all, you know, as long as y'all are enjoying the content and stuff and, you know, keep the views up and, and the subscribers and everything. You know, I'm going to keep doing this, man. So I appreciate everybody that, that has subscribed so far. But if you have not done so, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button as it helps keep me motivated to bringing out this material, man. And yeah, yeah, let's jump right into it, man. So rest in peace, first off and foremost, to Lil Jojo. All right, and today we're gonna start off at, uh, this is a Chicago uh, Police Department original case incident report. And the incident is a homicide and a first degree murder. Um, the occurrence date was September 4th, 2012 at 192900 hours. A uh, family member notified is unknown. And they have the victim listed as one Joseph Coleman, a male black, age 18 years old. All right. And then we have an individual witness here. Um, the name and residence, of course, is redacted. But the demographics are a female black, uh, age 35. Excuse me. Okay. And we have injuries. Uh, the, the CFD uh, provide first aid. And that is yes. And the injury extent for the victim was fatal. All right, and the type of injury was a gunshot wound, and the weapon used is a handgun. All right, we have suspects unknown and no demographics listed. All right, getting down to a narrative here. Um, event number 17044 in summary, responding officers responded to a person shot call. Upon arrival, Joseph Coleman, redacted victim, redacted was observed laying on the ground, breathing but not talking. Redacted witness, who was on the scene related to responding officers that she was standing across the street from listed address when she heard gunshots fell to the ground and observed a newer tan four-door car driving eastbound. Redacted witness saw Joseph Coleman, the victim, on the ground. Ambulance 24 transported Joseph Coleman, the victim, to Comer's Hospital, where he was treated by a Dr. Grace Mack. Victim was pronounced dead at 210300 hours. Right, and then you have the personnel. And the next document we have is a, another uh, case supplementary report document, and it is a method slash CAU code. And this document was submitted on September 5th, 2012. And this is a field investigation method slash CAU code report. And of course, we know the victim um, is Lil Jojo. And the injuries are listed there. The method code is, of course, a person shot, and the CAU code will be DNA. So they'll be trying to obtain DNA uh, with this case. And so the next document we have is a morgue report. And this document was submitted for September 15, 2012, that's 0717 hours. All right. And just getting down into some new information. Okay. All right. And it says Dr. Wards performed an autopsy on the remains of Joseph Coleman and determined the cause and manner of death to be gunshot wound of flank slash homicide. External examination, gunshot wound to mid right flank and it lodged. Internal examination, which is internal to the body, one copper bullet, copper jacketed bullet recovered. All right, and the next document we have is a progress violence scene supplementary report, and this is a field investigation progress violence scene report, and this was submitted on September 24th, 2012 at 203600 hours. And it does list the criminal organization um, for Joseph Coleman as Gangster Disciples. Okay, and just getting down to see if we can get to an investigation, and here we are. It's a homicide investigation, of course, and it lists the victim, uh, male 118, of course, Joseph Coleman, 
and his affiliation is Brick Squad GD Gang. Uh, wanted unknown nail one. <clears throat> Injuries fatal. You know, gunshot wound lodged right flank. Okay. The weather and lighting at the time was warm and it was daylight. In the manner and motive, drive by shooting slash possibly gun re gang related. Excuse me. Okay, and we have identified by um, a female one thirty six. Um, so I guess the this female one thirty six identified the offender's vehicle, possibly tan or gray colored four door sedan, possible Ford Taurus or Contour. And they have some evidence listed here <coughs> from the scene. Expended shells. They, were, they did some blood swabs for DNA. Uh, digital pictures. All right. Took pictures of tattoos. Okay. Said bullet wound to right side of torso times four. All right, and we have some redacted private video surveillance from a residence which is yeah, they had a camera of some sort, I imagine. This investigation was originally assigned to BT-5296 as an aggravated battery with a handgun by Sergeant Baker of this command at approximately 1955 hours. BT-5296 re responded to the scene and met with BT-6791, who relayed the following, in essence, and not verbatim. BT-6791 stated that the victim was on a bicycle with another unknown male black riding eastbound on 70th Street, west of Princeton Avenue. BT-6791 stated that a four-door sedan was traveling eastbound and shot at the victim at the corner of 70th and Princeton. BT-6791 stated that the victim ran to 6954 South Princeton and collapsed on the sidewalk. BT-6791 stated that the offender's vehicle continued to travel eastbound with, the other, with two other vehicles behind it. BT-6791 informed BT-5296 that there is private video surveillance redacted. BT-5296 observed six 9mm shell casing cartridges to be lying in the street on the west side of the intersection. BT-5296 observed blood on the sidewalk at 6954 South Princeton. BT-5817 arrived and processed the scene. Reporting detectives notified Sergeant Baker that the victim had expired from his injury at 2103 hours on the 4th of September 2012 at Comer Children's Hospital. Reporting detectives went to 300 West 70th Street and observed it to be an intersection of 70th Street and Princeton. Reporting detectives observed Princeton Avenue to have a cul-de-sac at the 6900 end and to the end at the 7000 block due to a school property. Reporting detectives observed Princeton Avenue to have two-way traffic flowing north and south for the one block. Reporting detectives observed Princeton Avenue to consist of residential homes. Reporting detectives observed 79th Street to be a two-way street with traffic flowing east and west. Reporting detectives observed the north side of 70th Street to consist of residential homes and the south side of 70th Street to consist of Elihu Yale Elementary School with an address listed. BT 6598 arrived to retrieve private video surveillance, uh, excuse me, private surveillance video redacted. Reporting detectives observed the video footage to contain the victim riding on the handlebars of a bicycle ridden by an unknown male, black eastbound on 70th Street. Reporting detectives observed a four-door sedan traveling eastbound on 70th Street slow down and begin to shoot at the victim from the front driver's seat. Reporting detectives observed the victim to run northbound on Princeton and the unknown male to run westbound on 70th Street. Reporting detectives observed the offender's vehicle to flee eastbound on 70th Street followed by two unknown make model silver vehicles. Reporting detectives relocated to Ch uh, Comer Children's Hospital and spoke with hospital staff who informed reporting detectives that Dr. Mack pronounced the victim at 2103 hours on September 4th, 2012. Reporting detectives viewed the remains and observed one large gunshot wound to the right flank. BT-5817 arrived at Homer Hospital and processed the victim. BT-5296 and reporting detectives spoke to Redactor who stated the following in essence and not verbatim. Redactor stated that the victim left home at approximately 12 o'clock on, on September 4th, 2012. Redacted stated that the victim grew up at the 69th and Parnell Avenue and continues to frequent the area. Reporting detectives supplied Russell with contact information and Cook County Medical Examiner information. Reporting detectives redacted and spoke to Redacted who stated the following in essence and not verbatim. 
Redacted stated that she was sitting on the steps outside when she heard gunshots. Redacted stated that she observed the victim running eastbound on 70th Street and northbound on the west side of Princeton. Redacted stated that she observed a tan four-door sedan traveling eastbound on 70th Street slow down at Princeton and shoot at the victim. Redacted stated that the tan vehicle sped off eastbound on 70th Street with two silver-colored vehicles following it. Redacted stated that the victim collapsed at 6954 South Princeton and redacted. All right, we're getting to the next document we have is a canvas document. This is a field investigation canvas report and the date submitted was May 9th, 2014. Suspects are still unknown. And we'll scroll down to see if we can get to an investigation. And here we are at an investigation. Um, pretty much the same information we know. All right. All right, they conducted a canvas and they, I guess, spoke to a male 127, spoke to on scene, stated that he was on Yale shooting dice and heard approximately 10 gunshots, stated that he observed three vehicles traveling eastbound on 70th Street at a high speed. Described the vehicles as, number one, a gray four-door Ford Taurus, number two, a four-door Audi, number three, unknown. Stated that he knew the victim as redacted. <clears throat> Excuse me. A male 153 stated that he heard approximately nine gunshots, looked out of the window, and observed victim lying on the ground. A female 148 stated that she heard five to six gunshots, got on the ground, redacted. Male 134 stated that he was not home at the time of the incident. A female 135 stated that she was outside and observed the victim run eastbound on 70th Street and northbound on Princeton. Stated that she observed a tan car drive by and shooting. Stated that the car slowed down, targeted victim, and sped up. Stated that two cars followed after the first one. Stated that one of the following cars was silver in color with a donut spare tire. All right, and they conducted a canvas of the school and uh, mail 166 stated that he did not see or hear anything. No answer. Uh, stated they heard gunshots but did not observe anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stated that he heard six gunshots observed victim laying on the ground, female 135. Uh, stated that she observed a victim running eastbound on 70th Street and northbound on Princeton. Stated that a tan car was traveling eastbound on 70th Street and shooting at the victim. Stated that the tan car was followed by two silver cars. Stated that one of the silver cars had a spare tire on the driver's side. Stated that she did not see any occupants and cannot make any identification. Yeah, So I would say they're pretty consistent with the identification of the vehicles with the tan and the two silver colors seems to be really consistent. In the next document we have is a progress report. And this document was submitted May 9th on 2014. This is a field investigation progress report. All right, and we'll get down to an investigation as they usually have investigations in their progress reports and a progress supplementary narrative here. All right, we know this information. We're familiar with this information. Just scrolling down until we get to the narrative. All right, in an investigation on September 4th, 20, 2012, reporting detectives spoke, redacted, stated the following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted stated that the victim grew up at 69th and Parnell and still frequents the area. Redacted stated that the victim was involved in rap music and was supposed to shoot a music video on today's date. Redacted stated that the victim left his residence at approximately 12 o'clock. Redacted was unable to provide further information. Redacted stated that the victim is a member of the Brick Squad GDs. Redacted stated that the victim has made songs disrespecting rival gang. Redacted stated that the victim posted videos on YouTube that disrespected the rival gang and gang members. Redacted stated that the victim was having a rap rivalry with, <coughs> excuse me, redacted and stated that the victim may have been redacted at the time of the shooting. Redacted stated that Redacted was unable to provide reporting detectives with further information of Redacted, stated that the rivalry, rivalry was over people receiving music contracts. Redacted stated that the victim had a Twitter account of Redacted. Reporting detectives spoke to Redacted, who stated that she has no information to aid in this investigation. Reporting detectives spoke to Redacted, who stated that she has no information to aid in this investigation. 
Reporting detective spoke to Redacted, who stated the following, in essence and not verbatim. Redacted stated that Redacted, in the vicinity of the incident at approximately 1,600 hours, Redacted stated that he was driving a white Mitsubishi Lancer earlier in the day. Redacted stated that he has no further information on the incident. Redacted stated that he has no further information on Redacted. Reporting detectives supplied Redacted with reporting detective contact information. Reporting detectives went to Redacted, stated that Redacted was was uh, redacted and not at home at that present time, excuse me. Redacted is scared and does not wish to speak to reporting detectives. All right, reporting detectives utilized CPD data warehouse and identify redacted within redacted. On September 5th, 2012, reporting detectives, redacted stated the following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted stated that she heard from some from an anonymous source that the incident may have begun at 69th and Emerald by the grocery store earlier in the day. Redacted stated that she has no additional new information at this time. Redacted stated that she believes the rap rivalry may have been the motive of the homicide. Redacted stated that the victim rapped about killing the rival gang and believes that may have angered the rival gang. Redacted was unable to provide any additional information at this time. On September 5th, 2012, reporting detectives again re redacted in an attempt to interview Redacted. Reporting detectives spoke to Redacted has been relocated out of state for fear of his life. Redacted stated that she will contact reporting detectives upon his return. Redacted refused to pro provide any further information. Uh, no, excuse me. Redacted refused to provide further information. Redacted whereabouts. All right. And we're getting down to the next document, which is a lab report document. And this was submitted on April 20th, 2015. So about three years um, after the homicide. All right, and what we'll do is scroll down to um, an investigation. All right, the following evidence was received by the Forensic Science Center at Chicago on September 11th, 2012. And they received one fired bullet. All right. Um, exhibit number three is a nine millimeter slash 38 class caliber exhibiting five land and groove impressions with a right hand twist. Exhibit number three is suitable for microscopic comparison. A list of firearms which could have fired exhibit number three would include Smith & Wesson and any other firearm exhibiting similar rifling characteristics. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remarks exhibit number one and number two are currently in the latent print section and will be subject of a future report. All right, and here we have a lab report. This is a field investigation lab report, and the date submitted is April 20th, 2015, at 21, 25 hours. And moving down, so we see an investigation here, lab report. Um, the following evidence was received by the Forensic Science Center at Chicago on September 10th, 2012. Exhibit one, three discharge cartridge cases. Exhibit two, three discharge cartridge cases. Examination of Exhibits 1 and 2 did not reveal any latent impressions suitable for comparisons. The evidence has been forwarded to the firearms section. Any additional inquiries pertaining to this case should be directed to this laboratory. All right. And this is the forensics lab. We have a second lab report. Um, this one was submitted on April 20th, 2015. This is a field investigation lab report. Uh, suspect still unknown. We know majority of this information as well. All right, and item submitted: three spear nine millimeter Luger fired cartridge cases, and all of the cartridge cases in exhibit number one were fired in the same firearm. And these are the findings. Excuse me. One of the cartridge cases in exhibit number one was entered into the IBIS database. However, no identification was made. See findings for exhibit number two. Exhibit number two, item submitted, three cellular and bellet nine millimeter Luger fired cartridge cases. Findings, <coughs> excuse me, the cartridge cases in exhibit number two could not be identified or eliminated as having been fired in the same firearm or in the same firearm as exhibit number one. Tool marks in the exterior grooves of the casing, cartridge cases in exhibit number two, and one of the cartridge cases in exhibit number one were identified as having been created by the same source. 
one of the cartridge cases in exhibit number two was found to be and it cuts off there and it just jumps us into another uh, document here um, which is another lab report and did not reveal any latent print impressions Exhibit number three is of nine millimeter. Okay. I guess they're believing that it was a Smith and Wesson potentially here. And this is some on scene documents. Um, oh, sorry, the, the detective. This is a handwritten uh, supplementary report or progress report, rather, um, by the detective on the scene. And this would be. I don't see the detective's name yet, but might be, yeah, it's redacted. So by the detective, um, this was written up on September 4th, 2012. And the detective, of course, was on scene at some uh, redacted Princeton. Six nine millimeter shell cases recovered from the street corner of redacted Princeton. Elihu Yale Public School, Southeast Corner, something Princeton. There's a blood stain and a V circled, and there's a redacted area next to that. And there's some crime scene cars, and we have a victim not talking, slash, taken to ambulance, slash, no one with victim, slash, no witnesses on scene. Then they say witness. NFI offenders in a four door beige car. Another said white car slash mom showed up after victim taken to hospital. All right, we have another document, <clears throat> excuse me, that's handwritten. And we have a big redaction block in the beginning of that, and it is um, mail 127 that is unredacted. And it lists new victim redacted shooting dice on Yale with friends slash heard approximate 10 shots slash saw three cars drive fast flyby eastbound on 70th towards uh, not sure what that when Winworth past Yale one gray Ford Taurus four door two Four door Audi three unknown. Okay, they located some surveillance video. The shooting was at 18, 16, 49, not accurate with actual time. Uh, per 6791, victim on bike, second guy on handlebars, <coughs> east on eastbound on bike, slash vehicle traveling eastbound, targets victim. Vehicle gray four door Taurus slash victim lays bike down, runs eastbound, then northbound, slash second male runs westbound, appears driver firing out of window slash car eastbound. And we have another continuation of this document, handwritten it is a gang conflict, it says. Victim, Brick Squad, GD. Um, this might be the area, 67 and 71st, Harvard and Normal versus, and then they have a big redaction block. So I believe they would be outlining the Brick Squad, GDs versus some other faction here. Then they had a canvas, <coughs> excuse me, a male 53 and a female 48, um, I believe gave a statement. Uh, heard approximate nine shots slash looked out saw victim on ground uh, Next line heard five to six shots slash got down on ground went outside tried to assist victim All right, 21 26 hours video retrieval on scene All right, We have a male 34 Not at home of inc not at home not at home not home at time of incident excuse me slash arrived home after then we have what a, I would assume is a witness and a redaction standing out front saw victim run around corner across street 
slash saw tan car drive by shooting slash car slowed down targeted victim then sped up <clears throat> slash two cars followed after first car slash one car had donut for tire silver car and then here we have what seems to be a description drew by drawn by the um, officer or detective uh, it seems we have a play lot here and let's try to get a good look at this all right so it seems we have some like metro tracks here so maybe train tracks and this traffic goes both ways and then we have like a little compass up here um, these addresses are redacted and this says abandoned and I believe this would be the sidewalk but this is Princeton which goes both directions and this is that 70th Street which goes both directions um, this must be like fencing or something like that not necessarily sure but it seems there was blood left here and about six shots or shell casings and then I believe this is the school that they were referring to here so it happened like down the street I would imagine from this well not even the school I, I imagine is on this block I'm, I'm not sure that's interesting all right and then we have another witness that saw or heard nothing and then there's no answer and there's just a still a canvas of the scene <clears throat> uh, we got one female 35 said victim ran eastbound on 70th and northbound on Princeton tan car travel eastbound shooting followed by two silver cars second car rear donut tire heard six shots a male 146 saw a victim on the ground all right and investigations redaction log all right yeah, when we see that, that means we're coming down to the end of the document. Um, so there you have little JoJo. Excuse me for the little coughs throughout this. The weather's changing out there. Um, I'll be sure to uh, get some Benadryl or something. Um, thank you so much for, for subscribing already. I'm going to drink a ton of water, get some tea in me. But thank you so much. And definitely leave some comments on what you guys think about this case. And, you know, we could start a discourse in the comments about this one. Definitely interesting. But thanks and have a great day. Peace.